Hello students, your instructor here in John Mandela with another screencast. This one is for the Sans Serif number 2 group and it is Trade Gothic. So at first glance it doesn't really look like anything special. Um, you know, just your good old run of the mill Sans Serif. Um, that's true, there's not too much going on, you know, that separates it out. Um, things are squared off and you have letters like the C and the S. Uh, even the A allowed to be pretty round, the Q, I mean, look at the, it's not a dagger, it's like a little tail there. So it's, it's a type of is allowing itself to be round, again, the S, the P. Um, where trade graphic uh, really takes shape, so it's becoming more distinct, it's in its different weights. Uh, this type is actually looks pretty good in body text. Uh, it's pretty easy to read, it's pretty clear, it's pretty open. Look at it. Uh, this is just the bold version, so not like, you know, normally this isn't this much of a difference, but again, look at, here's the regular, and here's the bold. It seems like uh, a variant that would be much further away from the regular, but notice it's, it's very heavy, and also it, it seems narrower. Um, a lot of typefaces, when they get bold, they get wider, as you can imagine, because the strokes are getting thicker, but Trade Gothic's not allowing itself to do that. It's staying about the same width. Uh, and to do that, they have to kind of narrow it out, so it gets a little boxy in the edges of the E. You can see it's basically flat on left and right sides, but it's still very round up top. The R, although it's narrow, still is very round here in the bowl. The D, again, although it flattens out on the left and right, it still roundly connects back to the stem. The R has some nice um, change from a thin to a thick there. On the ear of the R, it's not like clavicle where it just shoots out at a diagonal. Um, you notice the R, it's, you know, it's round, the legs kicked out a little bit. Um, the S though is still allowed to be very curvaceous and round. It almost doesn't seem to flatten at all. Um, Letters like the C, D, and O, even though they might be flat on the side, still very round on top. The G, this is important with this typeface. This is one of the things that can separate it from the other narrow boxy sans serif typeface. And that's the G has a foot. So let's look at that. Well, uppercase G and the lowercase G are noteworthy. So the uppercase G has, you know, it's a round and the top and bottom goes up. It has a crossbar, which not all the sans serif uppercase G's have. It also has a foot serif. A pretty you know modest foot serif that's there. And then if you look at the G, it's got the nice little ear, again similar to the R, how it's uh, thin to thick, and then the bowl is actually very compressed, you know, it's very um, elegantly curved, but it's not allowed to be very, very long, it's, it's got a modest, um, you know, descender length, just like the P does, uh, again, the A is still very curvy, a little saggy, but still very curvy, and the P, much like the D, curves back to the stem, now this is Franklin Gothic Bold Condensed number 20, even more condensed of a type base, the flattening on the sides is even more evident here. Still very round in top and bottom though. Um, you know, the Q's tail is still very curved, things like that. Modest descender length. Um, and this is kind of a version, these two versions, the Bold and the uh, bolts condensed are versions you see very often. So let's look at it in use. This is uh, some kind of like TV spot, you know, a still frame or something like that, and you can tell that it's uh, trade gothic, well, although it's narrow and boxy, it's got the round S, and the G has the foot on it right there. The R is a round bowl, the leg kicked out. Uh, this is a fun and popular one. So these are Izzy soda cans. Uh, it also comes with bottles too. And it's it's unmistakably trade gothic. It's thin, I mean, it's, got, it's condensed, it's bold. Um, but I think the S and the G has a little. The S is curvy, the G has the foot serif on it. Things like that. A little bit, you can see that right there, and then sparkling. Here is a book cover that uses uh, trade gothic, both for the big white letters and for the small black letters. Again, curvy S, or otherwise narrow characters. Here's another book cover. See round R and S. There you go. And lastly, here's some logos that use different versions of trade.